Hi, I'm Clint the Collector from the Collector's Cast, and this is my shop. So everybody that watches Mike and I do our little show sees this corner of the shop where we very carefully set up a nice little display of kind of a multitude of things, uh, a real cross section of collecting of all sorts, and this is where we sit. But what people don't realize is, is there's a whole other big shop here. So let's take a walk around and show, us, show the people what uh, they don't normally see here. So carrying on here, I guess if I had to name a section, I'd call this the fancy section because I've got the fancy couch with the paintings and the sort of the fancier looking stuff. I don't know, I, I just looks fancy to me. Those are actual red skeleton paintings signed by the artist in hand, uh, by hand. Tons and tons of signage in here. And you'll notice a, a reoccurring theme is soda, vintage tobacco, and gas and oil and vehicles too. Here's just uh, another shelf with a what you'd call an eclectic gathering. But you can see I sort of do uh, decorate by color. This is a yellow shelf, so everything in it is kind of warm colors, like yellow, red, and orange. And uh, it's just sort of the way my brain works. And in fact, when I put anything together in here, it's kind of, it's like that. I just start putting things where they look good. And often it is a color choice. Coat button up there, every uh, serious collector has to have a coat button, a four foot coat button. That's from the 1950s. And by the yellow dot, you can tell it is Canadian. They call that a yellow dot sign. I don't know what you call this, but it's just a real neat transportation sort of area. You got that giant ship's wheel on the wall, and you got the, the planes hanging. In fact, we've got a whole Fokker family up here. We've got the yellow Fokker is a German trainer. We've got the Red Baron's Fokker in the distance and this little Fokker right here. So it's Fokker heaven in here. Here's a couple wrestling dolls. There's The Rock and John Cena, one giant tin Mercedes. Uh, people often look for the biggest Japanese tin toys and this would be your quintessential big boy here, the, the Mercedes over two feet long. But as you can see, I love toys, vintage toys of all sizes and makes, uh, particularly transportation related. So of course, a lot of cars and trucks, these old die cast gas pumps, I just love them. Uh, that bus up there is a one-off, uh, handmade for a travel agency in the 40s, I believe, uh, to go in the window and advertise bus tours. So there you go, you won't find another one like it. And that's my favorite kind of collectible. And speaking of not being able to find another one like it, right here, of course, we've got the Titanic. We have actually done, I think, a short reel on this at one time, but it's just amazing. It's hand-built out of Meccano uh, by one guy. It took him years to do, and it's just one of the most amazing pieces of one-off that I can think of. In Soviet Russia, ass wipes you. Hey, how about over here? We've got an elephant uh, covered in leather. He's just a buddy, you know, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, and speaking of Meccano again, I've got this hand-built uh, Zeppelin here made out of old Meccano as well. And it just happens to be moored to a very cool looking steel Eiffel Tower that was built in the uh, Victoria Shipyards. This is another kind of favorite area of mine here. These display cases really have some cool stuff in, it, uh, in them. And yeah, I know, a talking Trump doll, why is that my favorite? I don't know, because it's a talking Trump doll. I mean, find another one. A cutaway engine, uh, a little mini a guillotine over here, or a guillotine if you want to pronounce it properly. Vintage gas station maps. We've talked about those on the show before. Here's a Millennium Falcon. Here's a hand-built carousel. This thing is amazing. Somebody built this. This is not something you buy anywhere. The table's part of it. It's got a, uh, an electric drill mounted underneath, and you pull the trigger, and the whole thing is supposed to turn on a belt. It doesn't have a belt right now. But just amazing that somebody took the time to carve these horses and cut these pieces out and paint it all and make it. It's just amazing. It's just a, a piece of folk art like, like the likes that you've never seen before. Now, if the other side of the shop was the fancy section, this is what I call the eloquent section or something, I don't know. But I've got a lot of office kind of base insurance signs, and we've got this beautiful old clock tower here that I lovingly place miniature things on and around all the time. It's just becoming kind of one of my favorite areas of the shop, uh, the clock tower itself and all the little guys that go along with it. This is, uh, I'm not a big tin collector, but I do have a few and, and I basically just keep what I love. So everything in here is kind of really handpicked by me because it's got some sort of cool image on it, like a little gas pump here, or a little turtle, or a little Pegasus horse, that kind of thing. And I just, I just keep what I love. 
And uh, there's an Opera Soda sign that you will rarely ever see. Uh, there's a nice old Pepsi. There's a really old Pepsi. And we've even got some swords and sharp things hanging up here. Started to hang a few things like machetes and whatnot. This is something really cool. Here is a White House sword. That's right, you heard it here. Look at that, White House in miniature, DC on there. And if you notice the blade, it's the Washington Monument, complete with bricks and everything. So yeah. What will they think of next? 